What's going on guys? It's GB GBP Baby. Welcome back to another video. I hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to the new week. And yeah, we're going to get straight into things. We're going to be starting on Dala on the monthly. Definitely looking forward to this week. Hopefully it'll be a lot more calm compared to the previous two weeks we have witnessed. I am starting on the monthly and the reason for that is because I want to draw our attention to where we're coming from and where it's likely we are going to be drawing to. Now you can see that we've just very recently come off a monthly low. Monthly low. So I'm going to get that marked out right here as south side liquidity and what I tend to do is grey it out when it's already been traded to. So this low has been taken out meaning that we've grabbed significant south stocks because it was a monthly low and now I can think about okay what kind of buy side or premium PD raise could we be moving to. Well on the, on the monthly basis we have these relative equal highs up here. It is also a rejection block but generally speaking I am looking at these highs as relative equal highs because well they're relatively equal so let's get those marked out as potential buy side targets on a monthly basis we'll get that marked out like so put buy side liquidity i'll use this blue and i'll thicken it up move that to the right and i'm just going to put an m so that i know on the lower time frames that, that this is monthly buy side liquidity and then this was monthly south side liquidity now before i continue i do want to um remind you to make sure to join the mailing list the link is in the description and yeah, this is the first time I'm looking at these charts since last week, so it should be quite interesting to say the least. But that's pretty much everything I've got my eyes on on the monthly. I'm looking at these highs, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm looking at these highs and these lows. Our current trading range will be between this high and this low. So what we can also look at is going to be um, the midpoint of that. And you can see that we're currently trading above that. As far as I'm concerned, this midpoint should be able to provide support if we are straight into it. So we can keep that and take that into account as we move into the new weeks. So let's get that midpoint marked out just because that's our current trading range. Like so. And I'm going to make that red and dashed. And I'm going to write monthly equilibrium. Ooh. Ooh. If I can type properly. Now I'm not in my usual office space right now so you might hear some extra noises etc but um, nothing we're not used to. Is that how you saw equilibrium? Anyway, so this is what I'm looking at for equilibrium. Now let's drop down to the weekly and take a look at price. So you can see how we've came down two weeks ago, grabbed those monthly sell stops and then in the new week we traded down to the consequent encroachment of the previous week and came off of that. So we're moving away from a bearish PD array. More specifically, we're moving away from a consequent encroachment, which is right here. So let's just look at that in more detail. You'll see we're coming off of this. So we need to start looking for the buy side targets that we may be trading to. Now we do have a weekly bearish order block right here, but like I said, we have this monthly buy side liquidity. Now what price tends to do is go from internal to external liquidity. And as far as I'm concerned, this low right here is what we class as internal liquidity because it's within this range. What do I mean by that? Well, on this move higher, you can see that everything within this range, so from this low to this high, is going to be classed as internal liquidity. So although this is external for this short term range, it's internal on the long on the monthly range, right? So the fact that we've grabbed internal liquidity means that we need to look for an external target, which is why my eyes are set on this buy side liquidity and why I'm looking for this bearish order block to be ignored, so to speak. Now, price won't completely ignore it. If anything, it will use it and it will use it to help send price higher. As in, once we get above this um, bearish order block, I'd like to think that price can find support at it to then trade on higher. So although it's not acting as a direct um, premium rate, premium array to key off of, we can still look at this level as something that we want to see price trade through. So we are still using it to see, okay, can price get through that? Because then we can be comfortable to expect it to run for this monthly buy side liquidity. Now, like I said, we're leaving a consequent encroachment, very typical bullish price action, grabbing all those sell stops and weekly sell stops. We actually, so there's obviously a lot of sell side liquidity below here, below this low specifically. And you can see how we grab stops on this run. And then again, last week as well and then we close higher above this high so moving into the new week i would like to think that it can be a classic week in that we create the low on monday tuesday um latest wednesday and then expand wednesday through thursday and then uh, create creating the high on thursday and then maybe we'll trace on friday or even create the high on friday but generally speaking i'm looking for the low to be created on monday or tuesday now, what does that mean for price? Well, I expect some kind of retracement to be happening. If that doesn't happen on Monday, then I'll expect it on Tuesday. Um, and I would have to look for some kind of pre, uh, discount PD array to trade off, trade to first to then trade on higher. What we do have is a breaker. We have a low, a high, 
a lower low. So this high right here, which just happens to line up with that monthly equilibrium I was talking about, this is going to be a breaker high. So price can use that and I'm also going to get that marked out. So let's get this marked out in black and I'm going to put weekly breaker high because as price trades into that, we want to see does it provide support and if so, that will help us frame setups for um, on the pairs and on dollar to expect us to turn around at that point. Obviously, we have this weekly high to run. I'm expecting that to get taken. Again, I tend not to trade Mondays purely just because I want, you know, I'd, I'd rather let Monday trade and get in on the rest of the week. So I'm not in a rush to get in the charts um, just so that I have a better frame and idea of where price is likely to draw. But um, generally speaking, this is what I want to see happen. I'll trade lower, maybe not directly on Monday, but hit that breaker or some kind of discount PDRA that might be on the daily as well and then trade on higher to run towards that bearish order block on the weekly. If we get through that, it's these relative equal highs I was talking about up here. So I hope that all makes sense. Let's drop to the daily. The four hour is the lowest time frame I'm going to be going to, um, just because it's, um, sorry, just because it's, not, it's Sunday. So I tend not to go any lower than that until Monday. But anyway, again, that break I was talking about here, we got a low, high, lower low, clear break to the upside. We'll find a support. In the bullish order block look at what volume is doing volume is respecting these pdras i'll show you what i mean so we came back down into that bullish order block yes we traded down into this one but look at the reaction and then also if we look at this fair value gap basically i'm seeing a lot of bullish price action so even this fair value gap we're respecting the 50 percent level of that as well and although the wicks are coming down here it's the wicks that's doing that that is doing the damage the volume is respecting these pdras so there's no reason for us to expect price to come on lower we want to see can it draw up to these relative equal highs so yeah it's nice to see the volume respecting these pdras if anything we just want to continue seeing higher price push on higher so what we can do is we can black these out because we know that price shouldn't need to come back down into these ranges we do have a massive daily bullish order block right here, which also happens to line up with that monthly equilibrium, which also happens to line up with that monthly breaker high. Another reason why, if price does manage to get down here, I'd like to be expecting um, them to be accumulating orders to then send price higher. So I hope that all makes sense. Let's drop down to the four hour and see what we can find. And you can see we have a nice bullish order block and a fair value gap also lined up with this massive bullish order block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out this fair value gap. I like the look of this one specifically. Why do I like this one? Because it lines up with this four hour order block. It lines up with the weekly breaker high and that monthly equilibrium. So I'm looking at this range specifically and I want to see if price does manage to get down to it. How does it treat it? Ideally, we turn around inside of it and that can set us up with nice longs, etc. to then um, send us into the rest of the week and again, reach our first target, which is that bearish order block and then potentially the relative equal highs. So a pretty simple basis and basic a pretty simple and basic layout for the week or what i want to see with this week we do have a fair value gap here as well this is the very lowest i'd want to see price trade any lower into that we start entering this range and like i said price shouldn't need to get back down there so that's why i'm watching this one more specifically but if we are say we were to enter a long position from here our stop loss would be below here with the expectation to run up to our highs so we can talk more on setups and such later on in the week. Again, as you know, I like to let Monday trade first. We have relative equal lows below here. Beautiful. Price will likely want to snatch those up before turning around. So it is looking quite clean. Um, another thing to take note of is this gap. I spoke a lot about this gap last week if you're watching my videos. Let's drag this out and I'm going to make it black. Actually, we won't be able to see it, will we? Let's make it purple just for now. And, well, we don't really need these generally speaking but this gap why is this significant well we've delivered on the downside and then we've closed on the upside so the gap we should treat as a fair value gap meaning that when price trades back into this range what are we expecting support so this is even more support for as to why once price retraces back into this range i'm looking for a reversal to happen so that's pretty much everything on dollar i hope that all makes sense very simple guys um and obviously we'll have to wait and see how we create the low whether that happens on Monday or Tuesday, definitely don't rush into this week, but um, we should. it should be a quite a clean setup if if we do get a nice you know, displacement to the upside from this discount right here. Another reason this is a discount is because the range we're looking at, when I'm looking at this range, I'm, I'm not looking at this low to this high. I'm looking at this low to this high. So my premium and discount, discount being below the midpoint, which is right here, is right here. I hope that makes sense. So my discount... Is below this red line anything below this red line obviously we have that you know um gap which should act as support and then we have this fair value gap on the four hour i like the fact that it's in a discount 
in this range. Now, if we look at this entire range, you'll see that that gap isn't in the discount, but it doesn't concern me too much. Why? Because this wick right here, we've already grabbed stops below here. So as far as I'm concerned, this is the new significant range and you can see that by how you know it stands out. So that's how I'm looking at price. I hope that all makes sense. Very simple guys. Um, and like I said, we'll talk more on that in tomorrow's video. Let's head straight onto GBP USD. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe. I had a lot of new people join, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's start on the monthly and see how it's looking. So obviously if we're expecting um, higher dollar, we should be looking for lower pound. Now, if we're expecting dollars to trade on higher through relative equal highs, we need to try and find some lows for, for pounds to trade to. Now we do have the May lows right here and this long wick. So this whole range is significant, but more specifically, I'm gonna look at this monthly low as a potential target for price for south side liquidity. So let's get that marked out. And we'll put the same monthly south side liquidity on the right. And then you can see we've just taken out the highs. So again, same thing, we ran out buy stops, meaning that we should be looking for somewhere to offset them in the discount. So let's now gray that out because this has been done. We don't need to, I don't think we need to stress about price going back up there again, assuming we are bearish. There is a nice bullish order block right here. But again, this should, if anything, provide provide us with, you know, this should help us frame price. So once we get into this order block, I'd like to think that it would provide, it would help us hook onto it to then send price lower. So I am gonna keep this marked out just for reference. I haven't actually studied this concept, by the way. I'm literally like coming up with this on the spot. I know it sounds crazy, but what I'm saying is that if we're expecting price to get down here, it should ignore this bullish order block, right? It shouldn't react to it. So if it's, but the bullish order block still exists, meaning that, that although it's not gonna react directly to it, it should still use it because at the end of the day, it's a PDRA. So what I'd like to see it do is once it gets below that range, it use it as resistance. So we'll look more into that as we drop down to the lower time frames, and if price does continue to fall on pound, but let's now drop down to the weekly and take a closer look. So again, there's those beautiful relative highs that we ran, absolutely gorgeously, ran it once and then twice with a crazy day, uh, <clears throat> with a crazy week last week, reaching up towards that rejection block level. And you can see now we've had a nice change in the state of delivery. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the fact that we've taken out these lows right here, so we ran these stops, I'm happy now to be bearish on pound because this to me is a, is a break and on the low time frame we'll be able to see that in more detail. What we do have now is a bearish order block right here. So this range right here is a bearish order block. We have this level, so let's get this marked out. This is a bearish order block on the weekly, which is in quite a high premium. So if it's not that that we if it's not that we we'll react if it's not that we are reacting to, it'll be this. However, that seems a little bit too shallow for me. And one thing to take note of as well is an implied fair value gap. Now, where is this implied fair value gap? Because you know I, I throw this word around all the time. This range right here, this low to this open, only upside delivery. Now we've had only downside delivery, right? So if price returns back up to this implied fair value gap, what do we want to see? Resistance, right? So as we drop down to the low time frames, the daily, the four hour, I'm going to be looking inside this range to see, okay, is there a bearish order block or something in there that price may want to key off? And that might help us form setups to then send price lower to where, well, below this range and then start working our way towards these lows. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not expecting these lows to get traded to this week. I just know that that's where price is drawing to and where, well, I just know that that's where I want to see price draw to. First of all, we have this nice, massive weekly fair value gap to fill. So this is my first target is filling this bearish, um, this fair value gap and getting down into this bullish order block. So my first target will be down here for a bullish order block. Let's mark some stuff out. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Let's write weekly implied fair value gap. Let's write weekly bullish order block. And guys, if you join the if you join the Discord server and you just tell me to drop the screenshots from today's um, video, I'm always happy to drop them in the Discord for you to have for yourselves weekly bullish order block. So right now I'm looking for this, more specifically actually it's this high because this is the low of the fair value gap. And you can see the fair value gap between this low and this high. So this week I'm looking for this to get filled. And then if we are to, you know, be overzealous, so to speak, I'll be looking at this level. So you know what, let's look at this. Um, let's look at let's look at this as a um, low hanging fruit. So we'll put this as a low of FPG. So 
so now we have a very low hanging fruit this is my target and then this is where i want to see price turn around as simple as that guys and then obviously if we start trading through this that's when we can start looking at these lows and these lows but we don't need to stress about that we just need to know that we have right now a downwards bias so long as that weekly implied fair value gap is respected and on dollar you know these discount pd arrays that i draw our attention to such as the weekly breaker such as those ranges i was talking about on the four hour such as this fair value gap so long as these are respected then we're happy to be remain bearish so here's the four hour on pound have we done the daily we haven't done the daily right so here's clear displacement to the downside taking out lows now is there a breaker on pound of course there is where well we have a high we have a low and we have a higher high and the price is displaced so i'm looking at this last down close candle massive range not ideal but again that weekly implied fair value gap which happens to have a bullish order block inside let's go to the four hour i'm looking for price to find resistance and to struggle around here i don't want to see it trade above it if it does if it does then it will likely find support and trade on higher and it's just going to be a mess ideally we get here i want to see price struggle guys i want it to be like oh i can't do it i can't get through it and then i want to see us send on lower assuming dollar is respecting its expected pd arrays we have lows below here beautiful relative equal lows that was that midpoint i was talking about that once we get below i'd like to think that price will use as resistance and there's that low of the weak fair value gap so once we get here that's this week's target reached like i'd be happy like okay we've done that what next so here's my first target but after that and only after that will i look at these relative equal lows down here so first we need to see does it treat this right and then we need to see does it get to our target our first target because after once it gets to this target i'm confident that it may very well be easily able to get down to this target these targets and you'll see that we do have quite a lot of news this week on pound so we might see quite a lot of volatility in general so that's everything on pound again i'm probably going to let monday trade the only reason the only way i'm not letting monday trade is say we start trading into this weekly implied fair value gap and i'm seeing resistance at it early in the week like monday then and only then will i think about trading because i'm like oh we're going to do it that early cool let's get in other than that um i'm just going to wait out and let's do it let it, let, 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 let it do its thing so i hope that all makes sense let's finally finish up with the one and only euro usd uh is that everything let's start on the monthly here as well and again what we expecting we want to see higher dollar potentially so we want to look for lower euro now euro you can see is a lot more consolidated not ideal we have this low and we have this low now this low is a little bit too shallow for me as in we're pretty much there so i am looking at this low more specifically so let's get that low marked out as monthly sell side liquidity move this to the right and we'll thicken that up because we like it thick don't we lads and then we have a rejection block level right here so let's now look at the trading range again as similar to what i did on dollar now we ran out stops twice here here so now and we've had clear displacement to the downside again that midpoint i'm remember i haven't actually studied this i'm just curious okay how's it gonna how's it gonna treat these levels well it should use these levels nonetheless so let's get these marked out anyway because I'm learning just as much as you guys are, remember? So here's red, and it's things like this that we need to add to our chart so we can get an idea. So we ran out buy stops above here, so if anything, we need to offset them, of course. So let's go to the weekly. Again, high, low, higher high. What are we looking at? This low, Y, breaker. Just above that um, equilibrium. Again, depending on how weak Euro is, it might not make it to the breaker, and that's completely fine if it doesn't. It doesn't have to. But we know that if it did, it should find resistance there because we have a high, we have a low, we have a higher high, we have clear displacement to the downside, we have a bearish order, bullish order block that is clearly closed below. So any kind of premium or rallying we see on Euro, we're going to be looking for potential shorts and opportunities. So I want to see a down close week, so it'll be nice to see if we can wick higher and then trade on lower for the rest of the week. Looking for that monthly sell side liquidity as a target, and then we can start maybe thinking about these lows. But generally speaking, this is my target. Let's go to the daily. And you can see we have a massive bearish order block. See, this bearish order block, look at it. It's already traded into the breaker, as in this down close candle. We've already traded into it. Price shouldn't need to get back up to that kind of premium. If anything, now this bearish order block should be the thing providing resistance. And if we look at the midpoint of that, you can see this happens to be in between that equilibrium point and that breaker low. So 
you know, you see, you can see how we're starting, how I'm starting to frame where I want to see price draw to, to create its premium and the, before it creates its low. So it's little things like this, which I like to keep on my charts just to have an idea of price. So let's get that marked out like so. We have a nice daily high. We, that's, you know, there'll be buy stops above that. It'd be nice to grab that liquidity. Bearish order block, again, the midpoint. That's what we call mean threshold. Should be very sensitive to price. So once it trades into that, I'm looking for resistance to then send price where? Into our lows. We also have some relatively equal lows below this low and this low, and then this low in general. So let's go to the four hour, and you can see nice displacement, and again, relatively equal highs above those daily highs. It'll be nice to see if price can come back into that fair value gap and to then send price lower. So again, very simple. It's a matter of reflecting Monday trade, but like I said, if Monday wants to start trading up into these premiums, so if we, if we find ourselves up here in Monday and we're finding resistance at the right time of day, you know, there's no reason that, it, you know, a setup may not form or whatnot. So that's how I'm looking at price. And remember, this is all assuming that dollar is respecting these discount PD arrays, as in it's if it does come down, we're finding support at these PD arrays to then send price higher. So that's how I'm looking at everything, guys. I hope you found this insightful. Don't forget to smash the like button, smash subscribe, um, join the mailing list. The link is in the description and I'll be back with you guys tomorrow. Peace.